Fisheries biologist Charles Mitchell has developed a system for farming eels using farm nitrate runoff on his block of land near Raglan. Charles has been involved in research on New Zealand freshwater fisheries since the 1970s. We're a business set up to look at uh, alternative ways of utilising waste resources and resources that are causing problems at the moment. We're farming eels and white bait and mullet in the ponds, but we're also moving out to areas where there are water quality problems. We've just been doing a big a lake aeration project and we've been going for funding to try and uh, boost the, those projects up. We've got 60 acres here by the coast at Raglan, which is perfect for fish farming. And now I'm with Charlie One, and we're looking at moving Raglan eels on into these bigger scale problems like lake ecology and restoration. This farm has got no electricity connected to it. The water's all moved by the tides, and we've got these sluices here I designed where we can take the cream off the tidal water and pump the ponds up and down with that. We can move thousands of cubic metres over a tidal cycle. And we also spawn the white bait in here too because they use that tidal variation to, to lay their eggs. And that was the research I was doing when I was in math. I wanted to see whether we could actually control all that stage of the life cycle. So, so far I've been running a white bait population here since 1997. And um, yeah, I've got the only artificially maintained white bait population in the world, basically, that comes from here, goes to sea, and if they come back to me, I reward them genetically, so they get fed better, they produce more eggs, they get an advantage from associating with us. And that's the whole essence of domesticating animals. You have to give the animal an advantage out of it too. We're right at the bottom of the estuary. When we take tidal water in here, we have salt water coming in, and we've also got fresh water coming in from the top end of the pond. So we've got a blend of fresh and salt water, and they like that. And then, really, we just feed them on salmon food, and they don't ask for much more than that. They're real tough. We do eels, white bait, and mullet together. The eels do tend to take over the place a bit, but that's eels for you. And uh, we started out just growing white bait, but eventually we just had to give up and go eel farming anyway, because we had so many eels. And we had markets for it. We don't go find them. We just release the smell of happy eels down the creek, and all the little eels come to us. If we're looking after eels and feeding them, they're happy. And we can grow eels in five years, what takes over 30 years to grow in the wild, because food is in short supply in the wild. So we feed them on the salmon food. In five years' time, they're ready to migrate back to see the spawn. So these are migratory eels. They'll never grow anymore. Once they metamorphose into the sexual phase, that's it. They don't feed again in their lives. They're ready to migrate. They migrate north up to the tropics over three months. They lay their eggs and die. But the small translucent eels are called glass eels. They're really valued in aquaculture over in, in Asia for farming eels. Uh, New Zealand's got rich sources of glass eels. Uh, those little eels have come down from the tropics. They've come right down the side of Australia and across the Tasman Ocean to New Zealand. They're taking about three years to do that. Um, they arrive here and you get very large numbers arriving and most of them will die in nature because there's just not the room for them and not the food for them. And nature does this. It produces a lot more at every life cycle stage than the environment can support. But you can use that, <coughs> the way that these populations behave, by providing them with habitat. And these are completely artificial ponds. The eels move into here, grow rapidly. There was no eels here before we built these ponds. We can grow them really quickly. We grow a very high quality eel. We've been out, we've been encouraged by the eel processors. They've helped us to uh, send trial exports to Korea and China. Um, but we're up against the Ministry of Primary Industries and the whole quota system. So basically, having Charlie One on my side with the tourists is great because we can just sell our eels within the farm to tourists coming to visit the farm and we can do okay. But if we have to go into the quota system, then we're dead in the water. The role I'm playing in the company today is more or less business development. We show people the actual getting up and close to the eels themselves, where you can feed them and actually pet them. And we've had even people swimming with the eels. We like to say we're on par with Kaikur and some of the other areas around New Zealand when they're swimming with dolphins. Well, we have a, a unique raglan one where you can swim with eels, which is fantastic. After hanging around the farm quite a bit, I was taken aback by Charles's research. A lot of his work was now really topical. 
especially with waterways and waterways management. And we have big issues around farm runoff and, and other issues. And he was trying to develop, and he is developing methods of utilizing these waste products into feeding his fish because as a lone wolf, and he's not subsidized or anything else, he's always looking for ways to raise fish on the, on the, on the lowest cost. So you're always looking for the biggest margins in, in any business. And so he was investigating these areas and saying, what's being thrown away and what can I use to convert to fish food? So that was the first thing that really caught my attention. I said, Charlie, there's a lot of stuff in the newspaper uh, lately about <laughs> this um, you know, problem that New Zealand's having. I think you're your research has some, some validity into addressing this problem. Can we do something with it? So that was the first pathway that we took. We were looking at using farm runoff and converting that into a useful product, in basically fish food. And then can we then raise crops of fish in farm drains, thereby increasing fish habitat and also increasing maybe income streams for farmers. And that was the other key driver. Can we put an incentive into doing this work where a farmer then would be more inclined to pick it up if he can actually make a buck off it? Currently, we're running a trial over in Cuddy Cuddy, and there's been a lot of interest from the Bay of Plenty Regional Council um, in this work that Charles has done. And so we've teamed up with NEWA um, out there on, on a farm in Cuddy Cuddy, and they have built um, one of NEWA's um, kind of leading cutting edge um, high rate algae ponds, they're called. And what that is, is they're using farm effluent to raise crops of algae. And now we're trying to capture that algae out of these ponds and collecting it and converting that algae into, um, again, the basics of fish food, which is um, zooplankton. And so we're trying to get raised crops of zooplankton in the farm drain. And then the next stage, we're then feeding that zooplankton into native fish. So we have white bait and eels coming up and, and feasting on, the, on this bounty that we're creating. So that project's just underway now. I think it's really exciting. It's cutting edge. And it's a new way of looking at this paradigm that we have. So a uh, lot, lot to be sh shown there in the future. <laughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.